Glasgow has got a tremendous atmosphere about it. There's a great sense of self-belief from the people in the city. It's a stylish place. You know, we're not called Glasgow, Scotland with style for nothing. People have a sense of style. They've got a strong sense of themselves. But it's also a very friendly place and a very welcoming city. And the, the evidence of that is in the, the huge numbers of tourists that we now attract. That would have been thought unthinkable 20 years ago and in the massive investment we've seen in hotel and conference facilities in the city. If you look at all the major books on where to travel to in the UK, Glasgow hits very highly. I mean, I'm a very keen enthusiast for live music, and there are some fantastic venues. Glasgow's a particularly interesting city in Scotland because I don't think there's an equivalent city in Scotland with the character, the history, and the, and the traditions of Glasgow. I care passionately about the city of Glasgow having been born and bred in it all my life and what I care about is to make sure that no matter who you are or where you come from, no matter your social background, that our priority is to give opportunity to all and if everyone can get that chance they can genuinely make a difference for themselves. That's the journey I think every one of us knows within our immediate families of people perhaps that didn't have a lot to begin with but through good education hard work and good ideas can make progress in life. And I've had a good chance to do that, and I'd like that to be the opportunity for everyone who lives in the city of Glasgow. Glasgow has got the largest public transport network in the UK outside of London. We have international air links from what are in effect three airports. We've got Preswick, we've got Glasgow, and in international terms, Edinburgh Airport and its runway is no distance at all from the city. Now, we have got world-class international connectivity from those three runways. We've got excellent rail links to the south, both down the east and west coasts, and we've got excellent rail links to the north, in addition to the motorway links. Glasgow is an extremely well-connected city physically, and we have also got some of the best broadband and internet connections in Europe, so we're a well-connected city virtually. Glasgow had to adapt in the late 18th century when it lost its major economic opportunity from the changes in the North American markets through tobacco. It then became a major industrial city in the late 19th century and in the, to the early 20th century, and obviously shipbuilding and the railway industry were critical parts of Glasgow's history. Now that's changed because of the, the nature of international markets and so on. The financial services district alone has attracted something like 13,000 new jobs in the last five years, possibly 15,000 now actually. And that includes an awful lot of big names. JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, National Australia Group, Clydesdale Bank, BNP Paribas, who are French, O2, Dell. Um, then, you know, a whole variety of businesses at that scale. Compared to other UK cities, Glasgow's actually got fewer small businesses than it should have. And the challenge for us is to change that, because the more small businesses there are in the city, the more inter-trading there will be, the more business will be done, be done and the larger the economy will, be, economy will become. I think what really drives us on in, in this business and, and what we're doing is a kind of love for it and, and wanting to provide something for people who enjoy it, you know, people really like the place and, um, and that, that's really the reward rather than seeing it as a kind of entrepreneurial thing or like a money maker. There's always been um, a good bit of uh, community involvement with the shop. But I find that there's a kind of energy and a kind of vitality about Glasgow. People in Glasgow are much more energetic, they're much more lively, you know. If you know you can you can come here and um, you can you can meet up and have a pot of tea instead of going out for a drink and um, it so it's 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 um, it's been quite popular. Glasgow offers a lot for you know, all kinds of different types of businesses. Um, there's small office blocks that are serviced um, in city centres or out of town. There's industrial units, there's retail spaces, there's uh, you know, lots of commercial places. So there's a lot of different kind of um, you know, places available uh, for someone to start their own business. Glasgow was the first choice for us 
um, the market, the kind of market that we're in, the type of business we do, uh, it doesn't really suit us to be based anywhere else other than Glasgow. What the Chamber is doing is working very hard with the local authority, with the Scottish Government and with Scottish Enterprise to increase the effort that they make to increase the formation and growth rate of businesses in this city. Because if we got the number of businesses in Glasgow up to the UK urban average, that would have an enormous positive impact on the city's economy and on the national economy. The commitment through the Commonwealth Games for major infrastructure investment for the Games Village and the National Arena and Velodrome here in the very heart of the East End, I think those two things combined with the fact that we now have established the Gateway Project, which is going to be the largest regeneration project uh, equivalent almost to the size of the Isle of Dogs in the east of London. So we are talking about some of the biggest investment in infrastructure that we've seen in generations in Scotland. The Commonwealth Games represents significant investment in the east end of the city, particularly in the regeneration of the east end. And unlike other Commonwealth Games where most of the money is going in stadia, because the stadia in Glasgow already exist, most of the investment in these games will be spent in infrastructure that will provide a legacy for the future. Glasgow's always been a sports obsessed city. The fact that we have three of the largest football stadia in Europe, you know, in terms of the two larger city clubs and obviously the national stadium. I think Glasgow's a city that's always pushing ahead. It's the best city in Britain. In fact, it's the best city in the world, in my opinion. It's, it's the can-do attitude. It's the, the fact that we have people here who are willing to work with them to help them be successful. It's the supply of skilled and able people. And it's just the fact that it's a generally welcoming, vibrant and stylish city.